hate stems from something that happened to them in their past. So we gotta love everybody. My challenge to y'all is to refuse to be enemy. Is that Brad What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Underwater Fly Zone podcast. We're out here in our favorite episode recording mm -hmm. spot. I'm Foster Huggins. I'm Macy Simpson. Yes, and we're going to have another exciting episode here today. We have a lot of distractions, though. We got oh, some yeah. people cooking over here, some, some barbecue out at the park, and then we got some kids playing back there. Just had this dog barking. We for had like to wait 10 for like minutes. yeah, we had to wait so long for him to start <laughs> stop barking. And then you guys can probably hear the locusts. Too. Yeah, we've got the locusts going crazy. Yeah, there's but people walking. There's cars. Truck driving by right now. But hey, guess what? We're gonna have a great time out here. And hey, y'all might have noticed we've been doing a lot of episodes together lately. And there's two reasons for that. One, because we got a lot of new followers and a lot of new supporters recently. And a lot of those new followers and supporters came strictly from me and Macy's engagement mm -hmm. video, which by the way, first ever Underwater Flies on podcast episode to hit a thousand views. Woo! Let's go. I Wait, was going to high five you, but you already say, knew. was there like something there? Or... Yeah. Woo! Woo! First episode to hit a thousand <laughs> views. Thank goodness we That's finally awesome. did it. It is. It's so crazy. And then we had the Instagram reel that we talked about last time hit a million. Mm -hmm. This time we're going to be talking about some comments from our TikTok that now has hit two million. Mm-hmm all from that episode so yeah that's why we've been doing a lot of episodes together because a lot of our new supporters have really been wanting to hear from us mm -hmm. so we're gonna put out the content that y'all want to hear basically yeah. but I will say this this is the last episode we will do for a little bit I, I want to keep obviously I love doing episodes mm -hmm. with you it's great but um I don't want the people that don't want to just hear about dating advice dating advice to just like tune out you know what i'm saying so yeah we're gonna get, a, get back to our you know interviews and our mental health advice all that type of stuff but today it's me and macy and we're gonna hopefully give you guys some fire knowledge and just a fire episode yeah and who knows maybe if this um video does well and you guys have questions in the comment section we'll do another one. Oh, we'll definitely do another one definitely yeah. but we just um, don't know when yeah i just don't want to just keep it being just me and you yeah. you know what i'm saying but yeah. today it is me and you and we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna go crazy i can't wait i know i'm excited to get into these comments yeah these tiktok comments i don't even know them it's a different audience <laughs> you know instagram yeah. i feel like is more i feel like there's more just like judgmental haters on instagram but there's also a lot more supporters on mm -hmm. tiktok there was a lot of young audience just i feel like it's a lot of people. younger yeah, yeah. literally it was a really young audience, mm -hmm. and we had a lot of great feedback that you could tell was from a younger yeah. perspective, and we also had a lot of hate that was from, like, a child, <laughs> so we're going to get into all of that. A 13-year-old. Um, yeah, yeah, but before we get into that, as we, we have people riding by, mm -hmm. got to stay, stay focused. Oh, my Here's gosh. Here's the dog's back. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Anyways, we're, we're going to get into this. Macy, before we get into the questions, I just want to ask... Is, has there been anything on your mind lately that you want to speak about? I know it's been, you know, 10 days since we mm -hmm. recorded. Is there anything that you wanted to bring up here at um, the beginning? Honestly, yeah. I feel like Foster and I, with the direction of where we want to go and the direction where we feel like we are going now, it just doesn't line up, right? You know, and I feel like there's so much that we want to do in the future and there's some things that we're going to need to like leave behind so I've been kind of like not stressed but thinking about the future and like where are we going to live what jobs your career is like what about kids and all that stuff and I just have been praying about it because we're at that stage in life where we feel like we could do a lot at our age but it's just like okay what action do we need to take first yeah so like what do you mean and the dog is back oh, I know. But what do you uh, what do you mean like what do we need to leave behind because like, i think people might be like what, what's she trying to say here i feel like um maybe leave behind some of what people say is the social norms okay. you know and like kind of go out and 
out of our comfort zones and experience life and fail because I feel like we are both sheltered and our parents raised us right, which is awesome. But raised us great. Yeah. yeah, I feel like we need to just have that um, risk in yeah. life, and we haven't had that. You know, no, for so sure. I feel like maybe making a big decision of a career next year of like maybe fully going into underwater fly zone. And then um, like I want to be a teacher, but I feel like with you, that's something that's a risk you're going to need to take that I'll always be with you by your side. Though. Yeah, you're the best for me. I, I knew it all along. But <laughs> one of the amazing things that you do for me is you always support me. And mm-hmm. yeah, that's something we've been talking about a little bit. Yeah. I don't want to get fully into, but. It is true, like, this is our one life here on earth, and I want to live it to the, like, fullest of my Mm -hmm. ability. This is our one life. We don't get to redo it, and I have so many big dreams, and this is my only chance to live those dreams out, you know? And I feel like these dreams are truly my calling from God, so if I'm not trying to fulfill those dreams, what am I doing with my life, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, But, yeah. I agree. That was, that's just been what's on my mind lately. Yeah, we've been kind of overthinking where we're going to live or how many kids we want to have, blah, 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 yeah, blah. when to have kids, what to do if we don't want to have kids, but we want to, you know. Yeah, and this is some advice that I have not been following, but I want to try to get back to is that if we focus so much on the future, we're going to miss out on all the great things that are going on right now. Yeah. And that's something that I have struggled with, teaching especially. I'm always... I swear every day I go into teaching and I'm just like thinking of a way out in mm-hmm. a way or like thinking of something better I could be doing. But it's like, dude, just enjoy where you're at right now. Just yeah. enjoy the fact that you get to be with these kids and hopefully impact some lives. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's something I definitely need to work on. I know I need to work on it. I've just, I've just, I'll get into what I've been thinking a lot about, which is um, kind of ties right into that is like, I have been struggling with my career, which is teaching elementary PE, I've just been feeling like, you know, first of all, I haven't really been enjoying it, to be honest. Second of all, I haven't really felt like it, I'm called to do it. The more I do it, I'm like, is this really what I'm supposed to be doing right now? Yeah. And the more I do it, I just get a lot of, emo- I feel, I've been feeling a lot of emotions that I haven't felt in a very long time. Mm-hmm. Like I have been waking up for the past two, three years and every day I wake up, I'm like, let's go. It's a new day. Let's get it. Like, mm-hmm. I'm just every t- it'll be 6 a.m., 5 a.m., 4 a.m., 4 a.m. for working at Walmart. And I wake up and I'm like, let's go. It's a new day. Like, so excited to just yeah. get out in the world and go crazy and just make mm-hmm. such an impact. The past two, three weeks since I started teaching, I push snooze like 10 times. I want every last minute that I can get before I have to go. And when I get there, I'm like, oh, like, oh, another day. And something that, I've been thinking a lot about lately is I need to be okay with feeling that, you know, life is about experiencing the whole human experience, not just experiencing the happy moments, not just experiencing the days when you get up and you feel all fired up. That's great. But you're also going to have times in this human experience, this life span that we're all living where you're going to not feel okay. You're not going to feel, you know, fired up, you're going to feel like, oh, this sucks. And I'm just trying to embrace the suck, basically. And I also need to take a step back and be like, dude, what are you complaining about? (laughs) I know. There are people that have it so much worse. You get the chance to go into a, you know, air conditioned environment, make money, make an impact, be in a gym all day. Like, it's not as bad as I think it is. It's just, it's tough, man. And I feel like such a wuss complaining about anything like that. And I don't even want to go into that, but first year teacher stuff. If you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's my big thing. I just need to remember the human experience is all emotions. I need to allow all emotions. What you don't allow, you suppress. And what you suppress, you don't express. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't express, you just keep it inside of you and it'll ruin you later on in life. So, yeah. Um, but that, okay. One more thing I want to say is I want to, find different ways to express what I'm feeling because I don't want to just come to you every day and be complaining. Like, that's not fair to you. Mm -hmm. And that's not who I want to be as a man, like, for you. Like, (laughs) that is not good. I don't just want to come home and complain every day. And I don't want to go to my parents and complain all the time because then they just feel like, you know, they just feel like that, I don't know. I don't even want to get into all that. They just, they don't like to hear me complain about something I went to school for four years for, basically. And I feel horrible doing it, but I need to let it out, so... Mm -hmm. I don't know. I've actually been thinking my school district offers 
free therapy. Really? I mean, I even, I didn't even tell you this. I was awesome. thinking, I was like, should I just go in and just like rant to a dude and leave? Like, I don't need, I, maybe he'll tell me some good stuff. I don't know. But I didn't know that. I just want to get it out and not get it out to you because you don't need to listen to my complaining all night. Yeah, but I would want, I still want to. Yeah. In sickness and in health. True. Anyways, <laughs> enough about that. Let's get into this. Um, into let's start the it up. good stuff. Let's start it up. TikTok comments, or let's do one of the, we also put out a Q&A on the Instagram story, mm-hmm. which by the way, go follow underwaterflyzone.podcast on Instagram. Um, we put out a Q&A, and one more thing I want to say before we get into this, is this weekend coming up, this episode's being recorded on Sunday night, dropping on Tuesday, this coming Friday, we got a live merch selling event at a pop-up called the River Market Flea down in the River Market. Check out the Instagram page, uh, underwaterflyzone.podcast. We will have the address posted. We'll be selling merch. We'll have the new drop there. You can buy it before it even releases. I'll be throwing oh, deals. It's going to be awesome. Like The new drop is not even going to be seen to the public. Mm-hmm. You will get to see it before we even make a post about it. So That's awesome. Um, yeah, you can go buy it there. And if you can't make it to Kansas City in the River Market on Friday night, we're driving straight from the River Market up to Maryville. 9 a.m. to 2 in Maryville. We're doing another pop-up on Saturday. We're moving, y'all. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like Deion Sanders says, I'm coming. I'm coming, bro. <laughs> yeah, Macy's going to be there, too. You're funny. Yeah, I'm us. excited. I'm so excited. It just got so dark. Yeah, dude. I, yeah. I'm excited, too, dude. I can't wait to see some of y'all. Hopefully, y'all can't wait to see us. Mm-hmm. Um, come hang out with us, if nothing else. You don't even need to bring cash. Just bring yourself and say what's up. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It'll be great. Yeah, let's start off with a question. Um, I, did you see the ones I screenshotted and yeah. gave you? I don't. Yeah, hmm. I got a few, like ten, and then Foster got a ten, and then there's a bunch. Okay, this is not at all what we're gonna be talking about tonight. But oh. I want to answer the first question okay. that I saw get asked to you. Mm-hmm. What do you know about Islam and how much? And what do you know about Islam and how do you view Muslims? Do you have anything you want to say, or do you want me to take that one? Um, you can. First, so I can I'll see tell you this, on. before I really got to be following God, I've always believed in God my whole life from the day I was born until this very moment. I've always believed in God, but I did not follow him. I didn't really know much about him. I just knew in my heart that he existed. But I didn't know much about Jesus. I didn't know, I knew he you know, died on the cross. I knew what Easter meant. I knew that he was born on Christmas, basic stuff. I had a friend my senior year though. He was a, he's a Muslim. One of my best friends is Muslim. Actually, a lot of my best friends are Muslim. <laughs> really? I love Muslims. Let's start out right there. I love Muslims. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, y'all are cool. And um, I actually love that y'all have a, like, y'all have principle with your life. You actually take life seriously. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I love that. Um, do I think I will ever turn into a Muslim at this point? Definitely not. Mm-hmm. But my senior year of high school, one of my best friends was telling me, he was like, bro, you're a virgin. You don't drink. You don't smoke. You could easily convert to Islam. Do you want to? And I was like, bro, let me check it out. And then it just never happened. But like I was at that time, I was like actually somewhat not really considering it, but like, yeah, had an know. open mind. Yeah, I, I'm an I'm a open minded person and yeah. I'm never going to hate anybody else for what they believe. Yeah. Love you. I love all Muslims, bro. And shout can shout I, out to them. Shout yeah. out to the Muslims. You know what I'm okay. saying? Okay. And can I just say something? Um, our pastor honestly encourages us to go out and um, look at other religions for ourselves to th- see. Okay, you have to go out and see what do you believe is true. What do you believe is not true? And my grandma was Buddhist. She was from Thailand, and um, I loved her. Like obviously, she's such a great. She was such a great person, and. <laughs> and, yeah when she was really old before she passed she um became a christian but it's so funny like i feel like there i might get some like weird stuff about this but to me like a cult is different but like all of these religions like that people are under you know god and stuff i feel like they're all kind of the same like it just revolves around God but it's just how you perceive God and all these rules or commandments that you believe in your book your Bible I feel like a lot of this is just about like our differences and that's what makes us divide but I feel like if we all come together and say okay we all have I have differences with other Christians like I won't I don't see the life the way that they do at times so I just think that it's all pretty much the same 
but I believe in like Christianity the most. Um, but I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm right. I'm, I'm wrong. You're right. So yeah. I just have like a touchy subject about that. I, feel I like. believe that I'm right, but I'm not going to knock you for believing that you're right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, at least we like believe in our discipline and you know, Muslims actually believe in Jesus. They believe that they just don't believe that he was God in human form. Mm -hmm. They believe that he was a great prophet. I think we should go like see for ourselves. What do we really believe? If we don't know a lot of these other religions, it's like, then you can't really bash as long as they're not like cults and that stuff. But yeah. I feel like we need to also have an open mind because what if I grew up like being Islam and I see people that hate me and they're Christians. It's like, I don't really care to get to know you. And I don't yeah, think that sure. I see Jesus through you. Yeah. And I if you know. are Islamic and, or Muslim and you want to come to us and ask questions and like We're open books. Yeah. If you're ever curious about Christianity, I got you, but I would never be like, bro, you are wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm right. You need to like, that's not the way I roll. Me I'm not either. ever going to be like that. Yeah. Um, so sorry if you're a Christian and you're like, how would you, could you say this stuff? Man, I, I believe what I believe. As for my house, we going to love the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like you said. Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's definitely a touchy subject, but I'm, I'm not here to like, I'm not here to not talk about that. For sure, dude. But literally, like, the people I hang out with when we go play football and stuff. Yeah. There's literally, there was one time it was, like, more Muslims than just us, mm -hmm. you know, suburban kids. Like, it so was it's like, like, you can have so yeah. much, like, who cares about your differences? Dude, stop, you know? like, just don't be so, don't be judgmental, y'all. Yeah. L live with love. Don't live with judgment. Mm -hmm. But anyways, let's get into some juicy stuff. Let's do it. Um. Oh, do you want to get into one more question? Sure. Uh, asked by Joe Lee. Shout out Joe Lee. Oh, Joe um, Lee. Have you discussed financial plans for for marriage? What are your thoughts on joint accounts? That's a good one. You go. Okay. So I 100% believe in having a joint bank account because if we are going to marry each other and we are one person, why would we have two separate bank accounts? Yeah. That just doesn't solidify us becoming one. And I feel like if we have to hide our money from each other, are we really you know, marrying and doing life together, yeah. you know, if we're doing all this stuff separate with money. Um, we, Foster and I have grown so much about like financial stability and talking about our future. And we have saved so much like already um, and talked about money and the hard questions now, like w it, when we were dating. But like now that we're engaged and about to be married, I feel like we have a good financial like stability. We always are on the same page about oh, money. Every time, yeah. Yeah, always, which is a big thing that, like marriages fail is because of money, you know? Yeah. So I could go on, but what about you? And and honestly, you say marriages fail because of money. I feel like they fail. Yeah, it ends up being because of money, but it was honestly just a lack of communication Yeah. in the beginning. You got to talk about this hard stuff now That's so that you true. don't end up getting married and then talking about it and then mm -hmm. be like, Oh, time to divorce because we disagree, no. you know, and that's yeah. this is not to knock anybody that believes in two separate accounts. Again, mm -hmm. we're not ever trying to knock anybody. We're just talking about our experience. Yeah. Y'all ask about us. We going to answer about us. Yeah. And the thing about us is ever since like our first month dating, we were talking about money. Like, like we were, literally yeah. I would tell you what's in my account and I'm like, we got to save up for this. Mm -hmm. And like, like, and honestly, shout out to Macy. She's one of the type of girls that she wouldn't just expect me to pay for every single thing. You would always help out. I yeah. Um, I get guilty if I know that you pay yeah. more than me. Well, that's crazy because I feel guilty if you <laughs> pay more than me. Which is I'll serve each other. Try and yeah, serve and each I, other. I don't I don't like that I have to get help from you to pay for things at times. No, I you wish don't. I could pay for every single thing, but I just choose to. Yeah, you choose to and it's twenty twenty three, like come yeah. on. But, but also um, sorry you go. Well, I was just saying, like, we always we're talking about money and come like I feel like our ac accounts have already been what is a jointed mm -hmm. our account has already been jointed but it's still separate but when I think of how much I have it's how much is in my account plus what's in hers like mm -hmm. like that's just the way my parents did it I saw how it worked for them so I want to do it for us yeah you know? um Bruh. <laughs> well <laughs> and Keep also going. um I just think that Foster and I, like, we're still not married, but we have our money and we think about the future. Like, we think about, okay, what are we going to do with this money together? You know, like, what's going to help benefit our marriage one day and yep. help um, 
kind of decrease fights later on, you know? So I just feel like, um, use money as a tool, not as a, um, not as something that controls you, you know? For sure. So anyways, we'll get into some juicy TikTok comments now. Oh gosh. I've Um, not seen any of these. Yeah, she hasn't. And honestly, I kind (laughs) of forgot which ones I screenshotted. I did screenshot some of the new ones. It felt like at the beginning, like when we first put it out, it was all love and it was great. And I was like, dude, why have I been avoiding TikTok? The community here is so great. But ever since we hit a mill, it's been the opposite. It's like everybody's hating, like act, making us try, trying to make us feel like we stupid. But I mean, sorry, <laughs> it's I'm not gonna happen. Um, dude's got an engine right there. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, somebody asked. <laughs> well, let's see. I'm horrible at reading. And then they do you want me they, to they do said it? this. So you guys know the real. It was about us saving for marriage. Blah blah blah. You've heard this a million times. And this comment says, and then they do it, and she hates it, but doesn't know how to tell him four years later at the divorce. Bro. I, could, I, I feel like we answered stuff about this. Like, what if it's bad? What if you guys don't have the same Dude, connection? if your love for somebody is based around the sex you do have About together, only the physical? Like, what? <laughs> like, You're what? You're going to have a hard marriage to begin with. Yeah, if that's I the just, only reason that's holding you guys together. Yeah, so that comment was crazy. I don't need, we don't need to even respond to yeah. that. Honestly, I don't know what to even say. <laughs> Um, next one. It doesn't really matter if not making love is what's required for you to love someone deeper than their, um, than their personality. Wait, hold up. Let me read them one more time. It doesn't really matter if not making love. <laughs> these people don't know how to type. That's the question. <laughs> this dude's got a transformer as his profile pic. Okay. It doesn't really matter if not making love is what's required for you to love someone deeper than their personality. Then you have issues. It's. What's he trying to say? I don't know what he... Uh, I think he's trying to say... Let's skip that one. I'm just going to cut that out. <laughs> I won't cut it out. Just I don't even know what... <laughs> We're just saying TikTok... I screenshotted like like a whole slew yeah. of comments. I need to find the one I actually meant. Um, this is such a backwards way of thinking. The physical part of the relationship is half the battle. If you're not compatible, it'll fail. Okay, can I say something? Yes, please. About <laughs> when they say the physical part of the battle... Of- like the relationship is half the battle. Is that what they said? It said the physical part of the relationship is half the battle. Yeah. It will fail. It's half the battle in dating because you have to have discipline. If you're just saying the battle is like, um, like doing all the time, that's the battle. That there's no battle then. Like no. there's nothing to really be rewarding about that, you know. And I feel like us saving it for marriage and for, um a covenant under God is what is the battle and is what will bring the most reward and prize. So for sure. And and what the world is pushing these days Mm -hmm. is to give in to your physical desire to want to have sex. Mm -hmm. But what the world is pushing these days is to just give in to our flesh, give in to our desires. But that is not at all what the Bible teaches. And what we've always said is I don't care what the world is doing for us. We're serving God. Yeah. God calls us to save for marriage. We're saving until marriage. No questions asked. Who, who are we debating with? We're uh-huh. debating with the creator of the freaking universe. Like, <laughs> get out of here, man. <laughs> well, and the more people that you invite in your relationship, the rockier it's going to get. If you, you just need to have you, your spouse, and God. If you start letting um, outside influences creep in, your parents creep in, friends creep in, and tell them about your situations, your problems, yep. it is not going to end well. So that's just something that I need to say because I feel like we ask for so many, so much advice, you know, from our fa- family members, from our friends. But it's like they're not the ones that are with your spouse. They're not the ones dating this person. You, they can't really say anything. And I feel like that's when people make it, you know, mess up is because they look through an outside appearance that don't even know the inside. Yep. So for sure. And also. Last thing, if you build your relationship on anything else besides God, you're building it on something that is not a firm foundation. God is the only firm foundation to build a relationship on. Mm -hmm. And because of us building our relationship on God, yeah, at times I was like, man, does God really even care if we do this right Mm -hmm. now? Like, I want want to so bad. Like, can't we just do it? (laughs) No, bro, no. God has told us what to do for a reason. It's in the Bible for a reason. God does not say these things to punish us or to you know, be a strict parent to us. God says these things to protect us from the evil that will come if we were to give in. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that your relationship will not succeed. It could totally succeed if you do give in. 
that's possible, but that's no excuse to go do it willingly. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. God has set the foundation. If you build your relationship on the foundation that he has laid out, it is a proven to be a firm foundation. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, man. We could go on about all these. I, yeah. But there's so much, though, that we're going to probably talk about. I feel like if you really love someone every time you have sex, it's amazing because of the love there. You don't need to wait, in my opinion. That's your opinion? Yeah. I'm not going to I'm not going to debate. Well, and I understand people that aren't educated on, like, you know, the Bible and stuff. So it's true. Like, it is, if you love somebody and you do it, it's going to be a lot more special with, but without, or unless it's with somebody that you don't love. But yeah. I feel like people like that are maybe not educated on um, God and like the Bible. So I don't blame them for thinking that, but I feel like they're settling on um, lesser and they don't want to wait because they don't believe that there's so much better out there until they start to believe in Christ. Yeah, so for sure. Can't really blame them if they don't know. Yeah. they. M yeah. And honestly, like I said, I'm not here to debate. I'm not here to, de if you, if that's what you believe, mm -hmm. believe it, but remember what is the truth? What is the, div the divine truth of the world? It's not your truth. <laughs> don't let the world tell you they're pushing this thing. Live your truth, bruh. <laughs> If you live your truth, truth, your <laughs> truth is different from her truth and her truth is different from his truth. Yeah. So what's the truth? If everyone has their own truth, there is no truth. Mm -hmm. The truth is what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches to save till marriage. I'm not going to question. I'm saving till marriage. No questions asked. Mm -hmm. But then again, you that's way easier said than done. So do your best. We did our best. We're still we doing our best. Our best. No, we still yeah. do our best. Um, uh, I want to wait till marriage, but I don't know if he would be willing to wait also. What do you guys say to that? I don't, um, I don't, I want to save till marriage. I want to save till marriage. I really want it, but I don't know if he would be willing to do it also. Okay. Well then that makes me ask from an outside perspective, not knowing your relationship and how he is, but ask yourself, are you guys equally yoked? which some people don't know that are you guys do you guys have the same morals and I feel like if your morals don't line up together with God then is he really the one for you you know like if he's not leading you to Christ if he's leading you away which is to sin then and he's the guy it, he should be the leader I feel like you might need to ask yourself some very hard questions and talk about stuff like that and because then it'll save yourself up for a lot more heartbreak in the future that you don't need to have in baggage yeah and we're I mean we're not denying the fact that that is a tough thing to face if you love somebody and then you discover in your heart you know they're not the one that's a tough thing to face but would you rather let it go on and on and on two years four years six years and you still that whole time you're still gonna have that same feeling mm -hmm. that you know deep down this isn't the one you can love someone that isn't the one for you I love a lot of girls that are not gonna be my wife ever yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying but you're my wife because like you said we're equally yoked um, and I, I, that's the first time I've ever said that, but I get what it means now. So I'll say stuff like that. Um, we're equally like, we have the same morals. We yeah. have the same drive. We both know what we want. Mm -hmm. And Hey, at the end of the day, would you rather spend so much time with someone that you love, but you know, is not right for you or have the tough conversation, have the strength within yourself to end it and know that I have to be patient and trust that God will provide the one for me because he will. He will. I feel like you staying with that person is almost revealing of your faith because yeah, that's true. Yeah, you're almost saying like, I don't trust that God can provide someone better than this mm -hmm. for me, so I'm gonna stay with them. Maybe that's not true. Maybe you just really love them and it's really tough. But I would make the hard decision. But hey, your your life not mine. I can't I yeah. can't live it for you. And trust me, guys. Like I've been there before. Like when I was younger in high school and like. I would ask myself and pray to God. I'd be like, is this the best you've had you have for me? And then it really got my mind right. Like, why am I even asking that? I have never thought that once with you. Like, sometimes I would think that you're too good for me, you know? Yeah, so, and I thought that about you way more than you probably thought it about me. Oh, no. I always think that, which is yeah. why I, I feel like this is why I know we're the one to, for each other. Because yeah. we both think that we don't deserve each other, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. We don't take each other for granted. No, yeah, at all. Sure. Um, okay, so the next. I have a really hard time grasping this because I'm always craving it, 
but I know it's bad. How can I make this unholy feeling go away? <laughs> you want it or you want me to have you it? Talk. That, okay. That kid was kind of distracting me. <laughs> okay, I'll read it again. I have a really hard time grasping this, grasping the fact of saving for marriage. Mm-hmm. Because I'm always craving it, but oh, I know it's yeah. bad. How can I make yeah, yeah. that unholy feeling go away? They said unholy feeling. And it's bad. Is it unholy? Is it bad? Is the crave you have... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Who is this kid, bro? <laughs> is the craving you have for the person you love, is the sexual craving you have for them bad? I saw one comment that says, God judges the heart. These people are not pure at all. They've had sex many times in their heart. God judges the heart. Do you think God's sitting there like, oh, these two people are meant for each other. These two people love each other, but they crave each other sexually. That's a sin. That's unholy. That's bad. No, dude. God put that in us. That feeling is from God. Mm -hmm. Like the feeling you have for the person that's made for you is from God. So no, it's not unholy. No, it's not bad. And I really don't recommend you like cutting that feeling out of yourself because you're going to want that someday. That's what our pastor said. (laughs) You're going to want that someday. When you get married, if you... If you don't get that feeling anymore, that's going to cause some new issues. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's all about the strength in Christ. Christ gives you the strength, and you also got to have the strength yourself to be able to say no. Where is this kid at? Dude, I don't even know. Can you hear it? Yes. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> Bro, it's I hope they screaming. can't hear it. Anyways, anyways. Y'all probably can't. Sorry for our, sorry for our child screaming. Anyways, That's not gonna be you're going to want that feeling someday. You're going to want it when you get married. So don't push it away because you're literally pushing something away that's made from God. You need to ask for the strength from God and you need to have the strength yourself to say, no, no, it's not time. We are not married yet. We need to save this till marriage. No. Like, let's, let's go back to the question. How can I make that unholy feeling go away? You don't make it go away. You just get it under control. As yeah. a man, if you want to have absolute strength as a man, get your sexual drive under control. If you are a man and you get your sex drive under control, you will have control of most things in your life. Mm -hmm. Because if you can control that, you can control your nicotine addiction, your alcoholism or whatever else. (laughs) If you can control that, the mental strength is just, it just compounds, bro. I I think me being able to control my sexual drive, for the most part, I'm not saying I'm perfect Mm -hmm. by any means, but being able to, you know, make an effort. And I'm not saying I'm the best at it. Definitely not perfect. But that has been able to help me stay not drinking. I've never had a sip of alcohol. I'm 23. Was president of fraternity. Never drank, never smoked, never vaped. Not even once. Not even close to once. Um, and I think that goes back to me having somewhat control of my sex drive. Yeah, you know having what I'm saying? that discipline. But anyways, that was a ramble. And this kid is ripping us out <laughs> do you want to answer that um how can you make the unholy well, feeling that's not unholy go away? yeah you kind of said the answer that i was going to say like about our pastor he said um you don't want to pray that away because if you pray that away um and god takes that from you you're going to want that someday and god doesn't want us to not have that kind of um desire in our hearts yeah. you know god gives us these desires for a reason so don't try to um push it down, push it down all the way. Try to just let it go to God because it's not time yet until, um, you know, you become one with somebody. So it's, it's simple, simpler said than done. For sure. So, yeah. Yeah. I want to get into a more positive comment. Yeah. I've never understood why to follow that path, but this definitely helped me realize the importance we helped somebody realize the importance. How do you feel about that? We've honestly helped so many people. I just like remember see- reading the comments of people saying, "I love this. I n- this is why I want to say pure." And people say we need more people like this and stuff. And I feel like it gives me more motivation to want to talk about the uncomfortable. It, yeah. Because I never used to, but then seeing how people, obviously, I we get hater hate comments and all that stuff, but it doesn't mm-hmm. even compare to the people that we know are helping. We are helping and. I think that just makes it so much more worth it. What what would you, how, what's your response? I'm actually curious. What's your response to the fact that we've been able to help these people? Um, I would say like millions of people we've 
touched yeah. and reached. I would say that it really gives me motivation to want to be the best every single day. Um, not just for me and you, but for God, because I, I it's just crazy the way that God can use us to touch so yeah. many people around the world that we don't haven't even met before. And I feel like it gives us reassurance, like we're doing the right thing. For sure. You know? My, yeah, for sure. I, it's crazy. And my response would just be, thank you, God. Thank you for yeah. using us and working through us. We touched this person, but it wasn't us. It was God working through us. Yeah. 100%. Always got to give glory to God. Yeah. I mean, I've tried so many times to make an impactful reel on my own. Mm -hmm. It was only whenever we had a God-centered message. It was only yeah. when we allowed God to speak through us. You can tell in that reel that God was speaking through oh, us. Oh, yeah. And in this video, I just, I feel a difference when I know God speaks through us because when I talk it, I feel so much more calm and I, I just know what to say. Exactly. You know? Yeah, right now it's like I'm not hyped up or anything. We're just talking. I yeah. love it. We're just in the zone. Yeah, in the <laughs> tired zone, but also the... Yeah, we're a bit exhausted from the weekend. Yeah, but yeah, no, when I re read something like that, the fact that we could actually impact something, I'm just like, thank you, God, for this, because that's all I want with my life. Mm -hmm. We we hear it at Paradigm all the time. I want to get to heaven and hear, good job. Well done. Yeah, well done. Faithful servant. Faithful servant. That's what it was. I, yeah. I re said that and then forgot what it was. But <laughs> yeah, I want to get to heaven and have Jesus just be like, God just be like, good job, man. Like, you really, you really did your best in my name. Like, Aww, something like that. that that's would all be I want. Awesome. Yeah. And sometimes I read that positive comments and I just kind of look over it because, like, I'm kind of emotionless when it comes to feedback now. It's like, if I hear a lot of great feedback, it's like, good I'm doing what's right but nothing happens in my heart and if I hear hate I'm like pray for them because they're speaking out of a mm -hmm. hateful instance what always stems from something else yeah I'm just like pray for those people it doesn't affect my heart mm -hmm. but right then reading that I was kind of like ooh. yeah I it, think it's great dude what really touches you and I know is when you get the those dms or messages on snapchat that are like people send you paragraphs about the stuff they deal with and I feel like that's what makes you more motivated to want to do yeah because you get a lot of comments like that and I got one too which I never do but you I deserve got more though for sure yeah it was about how her and her boyfriend were waiting and how she just wanted to have some of my advice and then you like she like DM'd you and like talked to you and she's from like she, yeah it translated she's from like gosh I don't know like Italy or something and you had a whole conversation yeah oh, it was so, kind of cool what a weird yeah. time we live in where just two and simple people I like know. us can touch somebody like that well so on my YouTube channel <laughs> which I don't post anymore but it was kind of sweet and sentimental because I got a comment like a month ago about like I don't know why I was talking about my grandma you know with the grocery bags or something I was talking about her yeah and this guy was like that's so cool. I'm from Thailand and stuff. And he's like, I really liked your video. And I was like, dude, that's insane. It's a, it's a weird world we're living in. Yeah. The fact that 2 million people know that we've saved a marriage is crazy. <laughs> More like three? Yes. I don't know. Um, three years is a long time, though. I don't want to date somebody that long before I get married. Um, keep me updated on when the wedding is. June 1st, baby. Oh, yeah. We probably didn't even announce it yet. June 1st. June 1st, woo -woo. Yes, in, less than a year. Yep, I think yep. less than 10 months. I don't know why I screenshot this one. We still don't know where we're going on our honeymoon, by the way, so. Yeah, if you know any good honeymoon spots, hit us up. That are affordable. Sorry for being kind of quiet right now. I need to find <laughs> a good one. But yeah, guys, I'm I'm just a bit tired. Yeah, no, we're good. We're just in the zone um, more than anything. It's just such a chill, on. relaxing night. Like, I could sleep under yeah, no, this is the so lights. Good. Um. Do you not have any good ones? I love this. Oh, this is cool. I thought he was coming up. I know. I heard. I love this. The extreme red pill and blue pill are trying to ruin godly marriages. I respect you guys so much. Do you know what the red pill and blue pill no. stuff means? The red pill would be more on the, uh, you know, bald-headed man from Romania that went to jail. Huh? The, the red pill would be more on the Andrew oh, Tate side. Okay. I know <laughs> the, that. The blue pill would be more. I don't know what the blue pill is, actually. What? I don't even know. I don't know. But, yeah, I agree. Like, uh, I don't the, know what that is. I'll, I'll speak on this because, like, I, it's entertaining. Sorry if you 
are going to be mad at me for saying this. The Fresh and Fit podcast, those type of podcasts where they have like a bunch of chicks on and a bunch of dudes on and just kind of go at it. I watch those sometimes just because it's, sorry, hey, y'all probably watch The Bachelor, like chill on me, geez. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's kind of entertaining the way they like go back and forth. Um, and there's some good points thrown around on there. But yeah, the way that some of those red pill dudes like, you know, Tate or whoever else, um, I don't know all their names, but these mm -hmm. dudes talk about marriage as if, well, first of all, they talk about just having sex is like a status thing, yeah. which is honestly a, like how is a reality even in Raymore. Like people view like, oh, I slept with her, so like I'm better than you because mm -hmm. I, bro, what? Like, no, like th that is not. Like it's a competition. Yeah, like the, women are not to be seen as like uh, trophies in a way. Like, oh, I, I, it's almost like you're playing Mario. Oh, I beat Rainbow Road. I'm better than you. Like, huh? Like you're treating a woman like she's Rainbow Road. Or <laughs> if y'all get that comparison. Yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, no, they they treat women as if it's like a competition, and um, they also say like, oh, I could have five wives, I could raise five families, like I'm good, like, man, that ain't that ain't true. I'm where, where, where's your happiness coming coming from? Is that comment saying that you're like that? No, it was saying. I love this. The extreme red pill and blue pill are trying to ruin godly marriages. I respect you guys so oh, much. Oh, I thought they were being sarcastic. Like, no, saying no, that we they're were like that. they have like a crying face and hearts. Like, oh, shout out to you. Okay, yeah. I was gonna say we're in the opposite. We don't have bodies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're at zero. <laughs> but yeah, no, I agree. I think a lot of the crazy things that are being pushed right now are not very helpful. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna. I, I would never say that someone is all good or all bad. Like, there are things that people say on those podcasts that I genuinely am like, mm, I, I agree. Mm -hmm. There's some things on there where I'm like, what in the world are you talking about? <laughs> like, yeah. And there's, there's people on the Republican side, the Democrat side, the whatever side that they'll say something. And I'm, I'm like, yep, I agree. And then they'll say something. I'm like, you're crazy, but yeah. that's how everybody is. If, if you say you like somebody, people automatically think that you just agree that agree with every single thing they've ever said yeah. that's not true at all man that's so true that what you just said like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's insane Thank you. like and like we don't even agree with everything our pastor says we don't even agree with everything e we each other says like our parents and who's to say like if we like um i i don't, I don't know i don't get into politicians and that stuff but it's like if you like this guy then it means oh you're on that side or oh you agree with every little thing like no yeah for sure um but anyways <laughs> but with god that's different <laughs> yeah yeah you got i mean with god if you disagree get over yourself yeah, because it's yeah, god dude. It. yeah obey literally it. all right so i was a more wait hold up it's a more beautiful kind of love is what this comment said yeah Dang. yeah just straight <laughs> up it's a more beautiful kind of love i think that could go into okay what is love mm -hmm. what would you say love is Love is exactly what Jesus did, putting one's life um, before your own. Sacrificing. So, like, he sacrificed himself for us. Sacrifice. So, dying for someone. And, and what Perfect. tomorrow is going to be. Perfect, because that's exactly what I'm trying to get into right now. I Wait, agree. 9-11, that's tomorrow. Yep, and people went out, and they, everyone wants to say, I would die for you. Okay, really? When the tower, tomorrow's 9-11. So, when y'all seeing this, yesterday was 9-11. When the towers are coming down. You said I would die for you. Would you really? Because now there's a tower coming down. There was people running in there as people were running out. There was the firefighters running in there and gave up their life. That's love. That's, That's hero. That's heroic. Yeah. yeah. Um, Those so, yeah, are the I people agree. that I, like, wish, like, I could say when I see them, like, thank you for your service. Even those that didn't, wasn't a part of that. Like, just being, like, those heroic leaders, I just really look up to a lot. Yeah, for sure. Dude, his Mustang is wow. I know. Okay, continue with All right, sacrifice. anyway, so what is love? We ask this question a lot. What is love? What does that mean? Growing up, and I'll wait because I kind of want to make a reel out of I'll this wait, if guys, I say it cool I'll enough. I'll wait. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> We're <some> teachers. <laughs> I'll wait. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much for sitting quietly. <laughs> oh, I love how Johnny is not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Put your okay. cone down. <laughs> Go to the safe seat. Anyways. See ya. Anyways, so people <laughs> people ask the question a lot. People ask the question a lot. What is love? And growing up, my understanding of love, I would always ask myself, you know, do I love this person? How do I know? I would know by asking myself, would I die for them? 
would I die for that person? If I would die for that person, I love that person. And I feel like you hear that a lot when talking about love. You hear people say, especially men to their wives, I would die for you, baby. I, I would lay it all out for you. I would die for you anytime, anywhere. I would die for you, baby. And then you got to look at that man and be like, you, you say you would die for, eh. you say you would die for her, cool. But honestly, are you ever actually going to have to die for her? Is there really ever going to be a time where there's a dude standing there with a gun and you're going to have to jump in front of the bullet? Like, is that really ever going to happen? Like, so you say you would die for her. It sounds great, but you're probably never going to have to physically die for her. But do you die for her every day by putting her before you? Whenever she wants to do something that you don't want to do, <laughs> do you just like throw her down and be like, nah, we're doing what I want to do. Sorry, I know you want to go shopping, but the game's on. I, we ain't doing that. Do you ever sacrifice what your wants for her? Do you ever die to yourself for her? Um, what's another example? Do you ever... Like when you say, yeah, you say you would die for her, but would you make her breakfast? Would you make her sandwich? <laughs> yeah, you say <laughs> you would, would you die for her. Would you do laundry? Exactly. Like, people always say that. They're like, girl, baby, I would die for you. Okay, cool. You're probably never going to have to die for her, but would you make her breakfast? Mm -hmm. Would you, you know, would go you? on a walk? <laughs> Me? Not yet. I haven't. I'm not the best cook, but sorry. No, I, I do it now. You do so much. But yeah, like, would you... Love is sacrifice, dude. Yeah. Love is sac. What is love? Love, love is sacrifice. People could sit here and say, "I love you all day." Macy could sit there and say, "I love you all day." If she didn't show it in her actions, it would mean nothing. Yeah. But guess what? She could never tell. She never has to say, "I love you" to me ever again, and I would know that she loves me. Yeah. Every Vice single versa. second. Yeah, like, and that's something that I've always said. There's a song called uh, "Oh, How's It Goes." Um. Oh my gosh, I can't think Is of it. Is it a Jesus song? No, it's actually not. Oh. Saying I love you is not the words I want to hear oh, from yeah, you. Oh yeah, I don't know that song. Um, more Than Words, there it is. Oh, that one? Thank you for sticking with us. Yeah, More Than Words. It's this, it's this song that talks about like, if you, um, if you showed me that you love me, you would never have to say you love me again because your actions are more than words. Mm -hmm. You know, more than words... You wouldn't have to show me you love me because I would already know. It says something like that. Um, and that's what our love is. And I'm so thankful for that because that's all I ever dreamed of. I was, I've been in, you know, bad situations. And in those situations, I was just like, man, she says she loved me, but I don't ever feel it. But with mm -hmm. you, it's like, I feel it all the time. You don't even have to say you love me. <laughs> like, it's so great. Yeah. Um, well, that just made me think of, like, um, our love, you know, how you're, we're so thankful that we have. It's like, I was thinking, like, what if one of us dies someday? And, like, what would I, if you died, well, I pray not. Like, I, I want to go first before. But, like, we'll see. Um, and I'm like, what would I ever say at Father's funeral? And I pray that this is not until we are so old we can't even yeah. think anymore. <laughs> but I would say I'm not sad that like you're you're gone and that you left i'm happy that i got to experience the love that most people only dream about you know and i feel like just being able to switch your mindset and think like that would is just crazy because yeah. it makes me like really value our love you know and, and it's just yeah. so insane like our love story is right now just even right now it's what most people dream about that don't even have at least to me like it's much better than movies and books because it's real yeah and what i want to say to anybody watching this right now being like man i wish that was me it can be we didn't get here by accident this yeah. didn't happen accidentally uh oh well, out of nowhere oh i found my dream girl no it happened through patience prayer and Honestly, perseverance. It gets tough, bro. Yeah, three <laughs> it gets P's. tough. Yes, literally. <laughs> and I made that up right now. So shout out to that. But um, God gave me that right there. Patience. You got to be patient, bro. I, I, I didn't date anyone for four plus years waiting for you. Mm -hmm. What was the next one? Prayer. Prayer. You got to pray. God will answer prayers that are meant to be answered. If yeah. you are meant to have a wife and you pray, God, please give me my wife. Like, I know she out there. God, please give me her. He's going to answer that prayer eventually. Goes back to patience, though. You got to stay patient. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen on your time. It happens on God's time. Mm -hmm. So understand that. You got to be patient. You got to pray for it. And perseverance is so important because it gets tough, y'all. It gets tough. I know how it is out there in the single world. 
I was there for a long time. We both I was know. there throughout high school, my yeah. senior year of high school. I finally was not so shy. I got to be a lot more well known. College, I got into college, you know, I know what it's like. I know this world we live in, the hookup culture is real. And you gotta persevere, bro. You gotta fight for your right to party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to the fourth piece. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta fight. Literally, the fourth piece. You gotta fight for, literally, all some Travis Kelsey stuff. Like, you gotta fight for your right. Like, this didn't happen accidentally. This happened through patience, perseverance, and prayer. Straight yeah, up. Yeah, so that you can get to the party phase. Yeah, and then, <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a battle, y'all. You gotta, yeah. you, know, you know, you gotta keep your, uh, you got to keep, keep your, your self-respect. Yeah, and keep your self-respect up. Like, don't mm -hmm. think like, oh, man, okay, it's been four years. I give up. Never give up. Persevere. Continue on. God will not let you down. Yeah. Like, mm. Yeah, so, again, this didn't happen by accident. Nothing happens by accident. Yeah, this was God's plan for us to be right here right now. It's crazy because I even the littlest things in life that happen every single day, um, which I don't know if it's. I don't know. I just don't ever take anything as a coincidence. I always think of even the littlest thing as um, just by God forming my like life. Every little decision I make, every little moment in life, I just know is from God. And that's what helps me to really focus on God throughout my days is because I look at not these problems, but like obstacles or anything as um, something from God, not just a coincidence. Yeah, you for know? sure. Coincidence is... I Again, somewhere I need to improve is learning more about the Bible. But I've heard it said before, coincidences is proven in the Bible. Coincidences don't <laughs> exist. Yeah. So you think that's a coincidence? It ain't. Yeah. Um, let's get into a few more. Okay. This is so fun. It is. It's so chill. We're already 51 minutes. I know. In. I could talk forever. I know. And it's so chill. I hope that it's not too chill. Yeah. Maybe y'all like chill. Sometimes I might be too hype. We'll see. Um. Sometimes you just gotta speak facts. Yeah. That's religious. Yeah. We ain't religious. Okay, we need to get into the <laughs> ones. Watch this multiple times. Shout out to you. And the biggest thing you are made... Oh, here's a good one. And the biggest thing is you are made fun of for waiting for your person... And the biggest thing is you are made fun of for waiting for your person and it's so looked down on upon by today's society. True that, dude. People treated me like I was an idiot saying I'm waiting for my wife when I didn't even, I was a single man. I'm a single man telling people I'm waiting for my wife to have sex. Mm -hmm. They're like, huh? What you talking about? Like, who's out here saying that? Like, but you got to be bold about it. And honestly, I think I might have said something like you, something like that to you when we were talking. And I think, I think I remember a conversation like that. It was when we were talking about, you know, our paths. And, well, are we virgin? Are we not? We both found out we were. And mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I've always told people I'm safe for my wife. I feel like that might have been one of the things that attracted you to me. So be open about talking about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's looked down on by today's society. Yeah, you might get made fun of by a lot of people. You ain't going to be laughing. They ain't going to be laughing in the end, bro. <laughs> they ain't going to be laughing. They, they might look cool down here, but up there, I mean, I pray for them. You know well, what I'm saying? And I always look at people from, like, um, an outside perspective. I, I just like to people watch sometimes because sometimes it's good to stay away from the crowd but as observe. I like to observe, and I am not, sometimes good – well, it's actually always good to like not speak so much, but to listen and just take it in before doing anything, before sure. actions. But whenever people are so crazy at parties and stuff and like hooking up and drunk and all this stuff, I just look at them on their Snapchat stories or their private stories and stuff the next day and they look miserable. They feel awful. They feel so ashamed it's and so, secure. Yeah. And I'm like over here after a workout, you know, drinking my smoothie, reading the Bible. <laughs> and I'm like, I feel the best I've ever felt. That is temporary satisfaction. So why would you feel that sense of just like outcast? Because I loved, I love feeling different because I yeah. know how healthy I am. I know how that I'm on the right track in life, you know, yeah, embrace, embrace being an outcast. Cause honestly, yeah you w may feel like an outcast it's because you are and that's good like it you don't want to fit in with this world we are not made to fit in with this world if you're a follower of jesus you should be very opposite from this world yeah salt be um, a salt of the earth yeah but then again we don't say this in a judgmental way 
And we also say, just like I said last time, if you feel any sort of guilt or you feel like we're calling you out right now, we don't mean to do that by mm -hmm. any way. And I will tell you that it's never too late for God to wash away your sins. You could be born again in his image. He can change anyone. Bro, he, like, there were, pretty sure there were murderers in the Bible that he made born again. There like, were. Yeah, literally. He can. Cheat, people that cheat on their um, wives. You are not too broken for him to repair. Yeah. You just got to turn from your old ways. And honestly, you could turn from your old ways, and then you may fall back and feel horrible. Turn away again. It's all about the effort. And it's it's tough, but you got. I mean, yeah. I don't. I don't mean to easy. make. Yeah, we're not here up here trying to judge anybody or make well, anyone yeah, feel bad. And I, I hope you guys can see that by now. It's like I feel like we don't always have to like redirect and say, oh, Sit. but we're not. Yeah. Because sometimes it c gets to a point where you people are always gonna think anything of us. We don't always yeah. have to be there and say, no, don't judge and all that stuff. It's like take it as you want, but just know that where we come from. We're never gonna. Yeah, take understand it like that. our hearts. Yeah, yeah, and that's God true. I don't need to clarify. Y'all know us by now. If you've been, if this is the third episode, because we put this is our third one that we put out in the last month. Mm -hmm. You know us by now. You know we ain't trying to judge y'all. I hope. <laughs> um, but yeah, that person was talking about being looked down upon society. So hey, embrace that, dude. And yeah. I, I love being looked down on by society. It means I'm doing everything. No, yeah. Right. It means you're on the right track. It's yeah. when. Not um, everything right, but you're on the right track, yeah. Yeah, because the world is the enemies. And if you feel like you're fitting in, you're fitting in and you know you're not going down the right path, then that's how you should know you should be scared, <laughs> you know. Um, my husband and I both waited. This is exactly how we felt now in marriage, intimacy, built on foundation, and safety of our commitment. Yeah, I feel like saving till marriage does provide some some form of safety, <laughs> I, I I feel like there's no jealousy or insecurity. Oh yeah. It's not like my wife's cool, but like I remember back when I was dating that one person. Oh, that was better. With her. Or like you know what I'm saying? Well, We're never a, gonna have that. There's a reason why God tells us to wait for marriage, um, and I feel like do if you even do some stuff and not even you know smacks um <laughs> th and then i feel like you would feel very insecure and just ashamed so I, there's just such a r reason behind everything that god says and i mean some people it's like you have to do it for yourselves to be able to really know which will cost something but if that's how you will learn not to do that then i mean by all means try i yeah. don't know we're gonna call a time out because i gotta switch the battery real quick all right y'all we're back um <laughs> We, you were saying something really good. Well, that was that was in though. I okay. Was done. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I want to say one more thing though. It was about safety. Uh huh. Um. Yeah. One big thing about <laughs> it's funny like. What the, this episode's so like kind of choppy, but it's so chill. I hope I really hope it lands. We'll see. I mean, mm -hmm. the engagement one obviously was much more. Hyped up because we were much more hyped we up. Were, but now we're just like getting into the routine and I feel like we're really tired. We have school tomorrow. Yeah, it's a Sunday night. It's 830. Like, it is, dude. Yeah. So, hey, I hope y'all like it, though. Yeah, I hope you guys do, too. Um, anyways, so, yeah, uh, saving, till saving till marriage does provide a lot of security in the relationship. And a big thing that I want to say is that I... I'm glad that I'm not going to have to be thinking when we're having our sexual experiences. <laughs> Am I as good as the person she had in the past? Or you're not going to be thinking that, you know, he's good, but my old man was better, but he's my husband, so it's okay. Like, no, we're not going to have any of that. And that's one big thing that I think is important, big reason to save till marriage if you are able to, or if you yeah. want to turn away from your old ways and become new. Remember, you could become a whole new person in god's image yeah that old version of you that made mistakes doesn't even have to exist anymore so um but yeah uh i think that that's something that i'm glad we don't have to deal with yeah so well and i just it makes it so much more special intimate and rewarding like being able to say that we've saved this for each other and i just it just makes me think about it so much more in in not a sexual way in more of like an intimate loving godly way yeah for sure so and i feel like it just will save so much extra baggage by 
by not doing the temporary satisfaction, you know, thinking like the craving you need to have it now. And I, I just feel like it's so much worth the wait. Yeah, like, I agree. Could you imagine if, I don't know. I just I wouldn't even like want to just, imagine. Yeah. We don't have to imagine. I'm very thankful we don't have to. Oh, oh. my gosh. <laughs> I thought that was a car. I thought that was Scott. <laughs> oh, for real? Yeah, because I feel like he would do that. <laughs> All right, hey, so that's perfect. You said I couldn't imagine. I'm so glad we waited. It was so worth it. Next comment. Oh, Breaking gosh. news, LMAO. Waiting is not special. Laughing face, laughing face, laughing face, laughing face. Just because you save it for your wedding night doesn't mean it will be amazing or awesome. Mm -hmm. Hey, guess what, y'all? I'm going to tell you this right now. I expect our wedding night experience, sexual experience, to be very the opposite of amazing really it'll, it'll be it'll be a great it'll be great you know but will it actually be great probably not it'll be special <laughs> it'll be it'll be oh it'll be special like he's he's capping for saying waiting is not special but i mean amazing or awesome it might not be a very long experience <laughs> Is that where you're getting at? Like, I'm just saying, like, it's not going to be great. It's going to be both of our first times. Like, it's yeah, not going to be long. Bro has a point. Like, like With Foster. Like, just because you say for your wedding night doesn't mean it'll be amazing or awesome. Oh, my gosh. That'll be funny. Like, yeah. It'll be an awesome, amazing couple seconds. Oh. <laughs> there was, some, uh, there was one comment kidding. that said, there was one comment that said, <laughs> I'm just going to say it. He okay. was like, bro's going to last 15 seconds. And I actually replied oh, and I said, is. I said, dog, you giving me 15 seconds? Let's go. <laughs> Dude, are we talking about? <laughs> I don't even know. We're also That's in the so neighborhood. <laughs> I was like, dog, you giving me 15 seconds? Come on now. Be real. <laughs> okay. Well, that did um, remind me though, of that when that guy said that, you know, it's like people that say those hate comments, I just can picture them laying in their bed, typing that out, and then just feeling so miserable after, like maybe watching stuff after, or maybe just yeah. having depressing thoughts or have, being attacked by like demons and all that. I just feel like you cannot be fully happy and at peace if you have to even use your negative energy to type a comment like that. Yes, but. So yeah. it just makes me think, like, okay, where do those comments come from? So I feel like I really take hate comments with a grain of salt. I don't really get personal with it. Well, never take criticism from someone you would never go to for advice. Yep, that's what I said. Yep, I said she did that. say that. That was one of Macy's quotes. Never take criticism from someone that you would never go to for advice. Yeah, which is so, like, insane. That's, yeah. like, such a hard hit. Hey, but at the end of the day, man, keep... Keep putting your hate comments on our posts. It's boosting our algorithm. <laughs> Start some arguments in the comments. Let's go. Gosh, like, that was insane. Yeah, there have been, on the TikTok especially, there is like hundred. there's like a comment and then like a hundred replies of just serious? like argument. Yeah. Like and I'm like, hey, what? I'm like, y'all, in my head, I'm like, these people are really arguing in my comment section. Like, they're wasting so much of their own energy, know, time, and so just, dumb. uh. But hey, it's boosting the algorithm. So. That's so dumb. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's the world we live in. Holy With technology. Holy sheesh. <gasps> he didn't say sheesh. These people sound exactly like the memes. What does that mean? I guess we sound like some memes. Like a know. meme? Like we're like a joke. Like he make it, he's trying to make fun of us for sure. Aww. But Well, th thank you. I I feel like we were pretty funny ourselves, so. Yeah. But that one wasn't a joke. Like I'm that actually, episode, which I can see why people probably would think that. Yeah, I'm actually hurt by that yeah. one for real. It's dumb. <laughs> I don't. Now we're getting into dumb ones. <laughs> I don't. I don't dislike or think it's wrong at all that people follow this, but I just can't. It's insane the fact that people have so much self control. Why is that insane? Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! I. <laughs> he said, "I just can't." <laughs> it's insane the fact that people have so much self control. I couldn't imagine saying something like this. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't believe people are this good. I'm just, I just can't be I that good. I know. It's like trying to put yourself down. Like, what? Like, dude, the like, word I can't, the word I can't is like a foreign language. Like, bro, that is, mm -hmm. that's some checklist of Lockean. Like, I don't even know what that language is. Yeah. Like, how, do, how can someone say that about themselves? Like, I can't? Bro, what? Yes, you can. Like, have some self-respect yeah. like straight up and that just goes into another concept with like your mentality you saying 100%. you saying you can't means oh yeah you really can't like foster is so good at um i feel like 
making things happen because of the way that you speak you know out loud like you say you're gonna do something and you do it because i feel like it just gives you that much more motivation you saying it means okay i'm gonna do it and obviously god will equip you if it's the one that he thinks you should do yeah but when you have this negative self-talk and stuff it's like in your brain do you know how complex your brain is you keep saying that to yourself every little thing that's going to trigger your brain is going to make you think no i really can't do it so you need to start start talking positive thoughts in your head and it's more energy to be negative so it's 100%. like why would you even let that yeah be? if you say i can't you're right you can't if you say i can at least you give yourself the chance yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah like i believe that i can blow this thing up and you know change the the world i believe i can do that mm-hmm. will it happen that's up to god yeah for me i'm gonna believe i can though because at least i have the opportunity if i'm out here saying i can't succeed you're right you can't like you aren't even allowing yourself the chance mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying so and and honestly i feel bad for this dude because he says um he doesn't dislike or think it's wrong at all he just can't do it and it's crazy that people can people can do that mm-hmm. he's talking so bad about himself like i know a second ago we were kind of like i mean maybe i was kind of making fun of him a little bit but like <laughs> dude bro like joking. you can you can yeah like think more highly of yourself think about your last name think about your legacy think about look at a picture of yourself when you were a little kid and tell that look at that picture and say you can't you can't like no, that's horrible. Mm-hmm. Like, look at that, per- look at that version of yourself, and remember all the hopes and dreams that you had for your future. I-, I saw a picture of me the other day when I was a little kid. I was wearing this little chain, had a little Royals jacket on. I was like four years old, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, I couldn't imagine how hopeful I was back then, and to be living a life now where I'm not. You know what I'm saying? It mm-hmm. would be like I died somewhere <laughs> along the way. Like, I look at pictures of myself when I was little, and that motivates me to be like. Bro, I'm doing this for him. Yeah. Four-year-old version of me that had all these big hopes and dreams. I can't just be some average, like live some average life. Like, at least believe you can, bro. Like, mm. yeah, I love that picture of you. You were so cute. You know what I'm talking about, yeah. in the Royals, with your hat. Yeah, I should. I, I I might make an episode over something like that someday. Just back to some simple motivation stuff. Like, yeah. Oh, uh, that does hurt though. That mm-hmm. someone. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that just have such low self-esteem. They have such low belief in themselves. And honestly, let me give some advice real quick, just to anybody out there that does have some low self-esteem, doesn't believe that they can accomplish hard things in their life. First of all, if you wanna break that habit, if you wanna break that mindset, start by doing small things. You probably don't believe you can because you have failed yourself so many times at other things. Like every New Year's Eve, what's everybody say? I'm gonna get back in the gym. Mm -hmm. They do it for a day, two days, three days then they have the rest day. The rest day turns into a rest week. The rest week turns into a rest month. The rest month turns into, I'm gonna try this again next New Year's. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. You and then failed they yourself. It. <laughs> exactly. And then after you have failed yourself, you mm-hmm. failed your goal, that hurts your self-confidence, whether you realize it or not. You say you're gonna go to the gym, you don't. You say you're gonna start on your podcast, for example. You're gonna start yeah. on your clothing brand. You're gonna start calling your grandpa every day. You're gonna start doing some goal Mm -hmm. and then you begin and then you quit you fail essentially at your goal that has a hit on your self-confidence if you want to rebuild your self-confidence start doing little tasks every day they talk about making your bed in the military you know why because that starts off with a win you got to start building up wins building up wins builds up self-confidence make your bed and that's something that I sleep with the blanket, so people, my mom might be watching this and be like, Foster, you don't even make your bed. What you talking about? <laughs> but yeah, he anyway. He over the comforter. Anyways, and that's something I got to work on right now, too, because I've even had bad self-confidence recently, to be honest, at school. Not out here in the real mm-hmm. world, but at school, I've been like, man, am I really supposed, Am I really a good teacher? Like, I don't know. You got to start with small victories. Small things mm-hmm. add up to big things. You know what I'm saying? So um, to anybody out there with low self-confidence, do the little things. Do the little things. Start little goals. Start accomplishing them. That builds momentum. Gets the snowball rolling. As a snowball rolls, it gets bigger, 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 bigger. And yes. you can do great things with your life. I don't yes, care who you can. are. I don't care yeah. who's watching this. Good job. Gosh. There's your motivational speaker coming out. Yes. <laughs> gets me annoyed these days. I really get in. I told, I've been telling Macy this so much. I'm so over motivation. Mm-hmm. I'm over it. I don't want to have to be motivated to do things. I don't want to have to be motivated to go to the gym. I know I need to go to the gym. Why do I need to be motivated? I just need to do what I need to do. I'm over being motivated. I'm over, if I feel bad, 
Who cares? If I feel good, who cares? If I'm at school and one of my classes, you know, if I'm at school and my first grade class makes me mad, my second grade class is walking in. They deserve my best. Who cares how I feel? Mm -hmm. Am I annoyed? Am I mad? Who cares? Get over yourself. You need to give your best to them. I'm over like emo like feeling emotions and acting on my emotions. That's yeah. that's another big thing I've been thinking about lately is like I'm over it. I don't need to be motivated. I need to do what I need to do and that's it. Bottom line, period. Game over. Oh. You are on fire Bro, now. I'm just these are these are the conversations I have this on myself. This last half is fired up. Maybe you need to this is like a rant session right now. I need it. I need it. <laughs> Sometimes I wish I had that seems so pure. Sorry, what are you gonna say? Nothing. That was my laugh. Okay. Amazing. I, I wish I waited that. for my husband. Hey, just because we're waiting and you haven't does not mean that you can't still have a pure, just as pure marriage, you know? Yes. And it's not like, oh, I messed up. Now I'm never going to be forgiven. Now I shouldn't turn back now and all that stuff. It's like, no, we've messed up in other ways. But yeah. Are we going to keep focusing on the past? Are we going that way? No, we're going the future. And we're going to focus on where we're at right now. What's the next step to be better than who we are yesterday? Yep, and you can't change the past. And the future doesn't even exist. There's no guarantee that you're even going to wake True. up tomorrow. You got to, only, only thing you control is right now. Right you can now. only control right now. So you wish you waited for your husband. Well, you can't change that you didn't, but you can change right now. You can change how your marriage is with him now and exactly. pray for forgiveness pray for just the purity in your relationship and your marriage and just pray that this portion of your life will be everything that you've prayed for exactly and it'll make up if not make it even more special honestly could mm -hmm. god can use the brokenness into the most beautiful thing ever that he might not even have used if you weren't broken if you didn't have those flaws <clears throat> so yeah exactly. But when I'm, but when I say it, I'm weird. What? But when I say it, I'm weird. Like about. So they're saving. saying like whenever we say it, it's cool. But when they say it, they're weird. Are they? Is that a compliment? They're saying, I don't know if it's a compliment or not. But they're saying when they say it, it's weird. But when we, they're implying that when we say it, it's not weird. Well, thank you. Well, what I'm saying is when we say it, it is weird. When I, I was in college and I told people I was saved until marriage, do you know how oh, I was treated, man? Part. Like, these, this dude said, but when I say it, look, but when I say it, I'm weird. He's saying he thinks he's weird, oh, but yeah. we're not. Bro, do you know how weird I felt? We would never, like, Foster was in the fraternity. I was friends with people in the sororities. Would we really ever get invited to, like, those cool parties and stuff? Like, mm -hmm. No, would, because we they were always we would invited, never, but they knew we would never go. Yeah, like and they like we could show up, but they were never going to go out of their way to invite us. Yeah, so yeah. and it, I think that we were definitely looked at as different because, like, we were not our relationship wasn't how society viewed us, and it was definitely the different pathway which had made us lose a couple friends and opportunities of temporary satisfaction along the way which i'm grateful for but yeah i just feel like if you're not called weird or an outcast you're, are you doing it right yeah literally you know no i don't think we're not weird dude i don't i, I even sit here sometimes i'm like how did that real blow up like i thought no yeah. one was like this but yeah hey you, first of all, you're not as weird as you think you are. Apparently, there's a lot of people out here thinking yeah, the same way. Yeah, that's true. We have a good community of people um, backing us up and saying, wow, I, I'm glad that I found this people. There needs to be more people like this. Yes, You know. exactly. And, and imagine if nobody would have said something. Imagine if we didn't make a video about this. We would all think that we're so weird when we all need to come together and say, you know what, we're all different. We're all unique. And I feel like that's just something that therapy helps is to be like yeah you're not alone you know and the enemy will try to make you think that you're alone and that you're only you are dealing with this when yep. in fact everybody's dealing with exactly what you're doing with probably exactly but yeah we definitely are seen as weird i'm completely aware of it i see everybody hanging out and i i saw my i saw no text come in i knew i wasn't nobody hitting me up you me know what i'm too. saying <laughs> yeah, both of us, dude. My friends. Yeah, but, yeah, but it's okay. It's it's the way it is, you know. Yeah. Um, I wish I waited for my husband. We already. Mm -hmm. you, you still can. Can't change that. You can change right now, though. Sometimes I wish. Uh, okay. Not the same. 
this, this. And I'm made fun of because I'm a virgin and because I want to wait until marriage. We're made fun of too. Did you get made fun of? I got made fun of a lot. Um, I didn't get necessarily made fun of, but definitely peer pressured into saying, well, why don't you guys just do it if you know you're going to do it someday? Or like, how do you know that you're going to like it and all that stuff? It was definitely like a peer pressure kind of moment with all the girls, you know? Girls always talk about stuff like that and boys and stuff. And I I just am not one to talk about our relationship like that, you know, especially yeah. the physical. And I feel like that is what kind of made me feel like I was weird was because I d- couldn't relate with them, you know? So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's my version. Yeah. Pe- I would tell people I'm saving till marriage and they'd just be like, yeah, right. Yeah. Like, like it's your choice. You just can't get anybody. I'm like, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Sure. That's not true at all. No, true. it's true. I can't pull. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm engaged. <laughs> he um, yeah, I guess that's it. That was an awesome chill that was like a episode I'd watch at nighttime trying to go to bed. Yeah. But like it's so like zen and calming. I know, I liked it. I think that's honestly y'all, that's gonna be the vibe until I'm until summer. Until you're happy again. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Until the wedding. I'm blessed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're hey, happy. I'm very blessed mm-hmm. and I gotta remember that. Yeah. Every day. Let's let's end with just talking about some stuff. Okay. Um, you ask me a question, I'll ask you a question. Okay. Do you have a question? Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, I want a question more about us. I want. Uh, I kind of want a question about me. I'm trying to talk about what I'm about going through. Oh uh, yeah, I'm okay. trying to talk about myself. <laughs> you want to ask yourself a question? Or, okay. No, I'll ask you a question about you. You ask okay. you. I'll ask you a question about you. You ask you a question about me. Okay, just about your personal life. Sure. Okay. Um. Okay. So, ten ten years from now, where do you want to be, and where do you think we'll actually be? Okay, that's a good question. I I'm gonna have can't. to ask you the same one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so ten years from now, where I want to be, before where I, I feel like we actually will be, where I want to be is us like traveling the country doing pop-up events with your merch and all that stuff and your podcast goes in not insane but like you do live speaking shows and you make you know a living for the both of us and then we have like a bunch of kids being able to travel with them during the summer times but then like having our place to go to at home you know where they can grow up with their childhood friends and be able to go to school and stuff and I just feel like that's the life you like traveling with our kids around the country sharing the the gospel pretty much the good news um doing it in a way that will earn us money for financially stable enough for the both of us where we can also provide our kids the right the best childhood they can have but i feel like in reality with where we're at right now i feel like i'll probably be a teacher and still living our best lives because light our life is what we make of it you know and i feel like we need to be grateful with what we have not think about all that we want that we don't have so i I feel like either way if we have that life that i just said or this life i feel like i will be the exact same of happiness as long as i'm with you and have our healthy kids i don't care where we're at and what we're doing you know because that's like a dream life which would be awesome but if I don't have you and if I won't have our kids but I have all that's like that's not what I want as long as I have you and my kids and we're all healthy and have a place to live have food on the table then that's the dream life that I want so I guess that's me I'm a simple girl that dream life you just described is totally possible like (laughs) It, it sounds crazy, but I had a teacher when I was student teaching. Shout out Mr. Shipley. He was oh, the yeah. other PE teacher. He told mm-hmm. me, you know, he was like, he was like, man, because one of my students, long story, kind of, he painted his senior tile was uh, him and his friends as the Simpson characters mm-hmm. all wearing underwater flies on merch. And Shipley told me, he was like, when you come back here, you're, you're always going to be able to see that. And he was like, and if you never come back here because you blow up and get all famous, we're always going to be able to say, that dude was here and we'll always have proof because of that tile. He's like, 
you could blow up, get famous, and we'll always be able to say, you were here, and we have proof. We have a way to show it. That gave me chills. And, um, and I was like, yeah, that'd be cool. I hope it could happen. And he looked at me, and he said, there's been crazier things to happen. Aww. And I was like, it really hit with me because sometimes I think about that dream life you just talked about, mm -hmm. and I feel like it's so impossible and such just a dream life. It'll always just be the dream life. It will never actually be a reality. But when he told me that there's been crazier things to happen, crazier things have happened. I thought, you know what? Crazier things have happened. To me, it seems so crazy and impossible, but really, if I could just take some time to really dedicate and really grind, that could be our reality. Mm -hmm. And In prayer. it's so possible. Yes, and God will provide. Sometimes I sit back and that's one of the things I've really been struggling at school. I'm, I'm like, God has given me so many signs that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So uh, uh, there's been so many that I could just rattle them off. You know, the snow coming out of nowhere on the winter <laughs> merch drop wasn't even yeah. the forecast. Just the second we start the photo shoot, mm -hmm. snow. Um, just the way that this past summer drop all came together perfectly yeah, at the same time. Yeah, it was all perfect. Yes, and the live shows and just everything it seems just like puzzle pieces. Exactly, and it's every time it's like um, I'm dreaming so big, and how can this even happen? It's like I'm delusional, mm -hmm. but somehow it all comes together, and it's like that's not a coincidence. That is God working mm -hmm. through us. God, that's God showing yeah. me that this is what you're supposed to be doing. There's so much stuff that God has done behind the scenes that you guys probably don't know about that we could talk about on a podcast episode one day but yeah there's just so much and it's it goes back to the fact where you say like oh it's impossible but it's like what jesus did the impossible like this it's, is so yeah. possible yes and and when shipley said that that there's been crazier things to happen i'm like i think this is so impossible and it's such a big dream people have done crazier things in this world yeah. who's to say i can't you know what i'm saying you can't well, i can't that. exactly but i'll tell you what i can't do it if I keep doing what I'm doing right now, That's if I keep true. spending, you know, 40 hours a week you know, doing this stuff, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, 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 and like I, I know, like I see, oh no, uh -oh. hold up one second. Okay, so we're back, the memory <laughs> card ran out, and I was vibing, but yeah, I can't do this doing what I'm doing right now, and I know that if I could just dedicate some time and find a way to really take a risk, I know I can make it possible, mm -hmm. and I know God's backing it, I know God's backing it. I know I got people backing it. I see us growing and I'm doing this while, and, and sometimes people might look at me and be like, man, this dude, he's lucky. He gets to put all of his time into this. And I'm out here, bro, I was working 40 hours a week this summer at Walmart as I'm doing all this, waking up mm -hmm. at 4 a.m., busting my butt, staying up late, sleeping for two hours at some times. Like people don't see oh, the work yeah. behind the scenes. Like yeah. there's so much more that goes into this that people don't see. And, um, and I know I can do it, but I know I can't do it doing what I'm doing right now and I think I'm coming to a point where it's just like I might have to take a risk and some people that are that I care a lot about might not see what I see but they'll see it someday if I could just take the risk and break out break out of my own head and be like bro this is your one life you don't get to redo this all these dreams you have this is your only chance to fulfill these dreams this is your only chance. You do not get another life down here on earth. This is it. God has put these dreams in your head. God has put this on your heart for a reason. This is your only time to do it. So if you do anything else, you're, you're wasting your life. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm like, I, I'm going to have to make a risk. And yeah. we're going to have to go through it for a while. But it, it, oh, I know it will pay off. And it's just crazy because it's like you talking about this doesn't make me just scared or like, look at you like a failure it makes me excited like thinking because I know that you're gonna succeed and I know that you're gonna be able to create those big dreams and turn them into reality because of who you are and who I know God has given us both these desires now and I feel like it's just reassurance and confirmation and and you know that I will make sure that we have that you know yeah. security net and you uh, have the security net for the both of us. I'm genuinely thinking, like, 10 years from now, our, what you were saying, I'm sitting here, I'm like, yes, yes, yes. That is exactly what I want. But if we don't take a jump, now? if we don't, here's, <laughs> here's the thing. My New Year's resolution this year, my New Year's resolution this year was put myself in situations where I can succeed. Put myself 
in a situation where I can succeed. You know why most people you know why most people never succeed? Cuz they never put themselves in a situation to succeed. Most people are too scared to even get in that space cuz they don't want to fail. It's very hard, it's very bold. It's almost again delusional. You almost have to be delusional in a way mm-hmm. or at least other people will view you as delusional. You have to have this belief in yourself that people are like this dude is crazy. Why would he do that? He had it all going for him and he dropped it for some dream that might not even happen. You have to put yourself in a space to succeed before you can succeed. So I'm like, do I take this risk after this year? I got a year contract teaching. And I hope they don't see this because <laughs> <laughs> they won't. They, I don't think they will. We blow up right now. <laughs> then I'm out. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, it's I like, don't know. That's something that we definitely need to pray about. What you looking at? Like is that, that a form? cat? I hope so, dude. You scared me. It's a cat. These noise canceling headphones out here. Did I really scare you? Yeah, I was like, somebody running up like, on us. <laughs> it's a cat. Er, it's a cat. But Foster, I just definitely um, think that you should pray about it. This is an important life decision. It's not something that you should just, you know, go out on a whim and just do it because you think. We need to pray about this, like, a lot. Yeah, And you will get confirmation in time. I've had so many people tell me so many things lately. I almost feel like it's a disservice to them to not take the risk. It's like my friend Jacob Jacob Malinado, my boy. Oh, really? He said a quote in one of my vlogs, actually. If you go watch College Vlog 6, Last Days Mm -hmm. in the Ville. It might have been College. It's College Vlog vlog 5, actually. He said a quote on there, and it was, I'm a success today. It was a quote by Abraham Lincoln. I'm a success today because I had a friend that believed in me and I didn't have the heart to let him down. You hear that? I, yeah. I'm a success today because I had a friend that believed in me and I didn't have the heart to let him down. There's been some people that have said some things to me lately and I just don't have the heart to quit. I can't quit because of them. Mm-hmm. I, I almost feel like I'm doing them a disservice to not take the risk on my dreams. I'm 23 years old. What do I have to lose right now? I got my whole life ahead of me. Yeah, no kids. Worst no. comes to worst, I got my teaching degree. I can hop back in there real yeah. quick. Yeah, yeah. You, you have that security, that stability, and it's like you're in the prime years of doing, like taking risks and failing, and it will not be the end of the world. And you know why most... You know why, you know why I know I, you know why I know I will succeed. I will succeed because of you. I knew you were going to say something like that. Because guess what? If we do it, I take the risk and we become homeless on the side of the road in Kansas City. I succeeded. <laughs> I got you. It's and a success. I got you. you still have me. Yep. And we got God Which at the center. Won't. I No, we won't be homeless because we have great parents. So I'll make yes, sure that and I will can. never have that even be an option in my head. And yeah, true, we have our parents. We are in a good situation. We're blessed for that. But I, this, I started this brand because of you. I did, the underwater fly zone would not exist if it wasn't for you. Because <laughs> guess why I was able to do it? I didn't have the confidence in myself. I've struggled with confidence. The more I've self-evaluated and looked back at my past, I realized I struggled with confidence. Never knew it, but I did. Mm-hmm. I was able to start this podcast because I knew that if it failed, if it was an embarrassment, if everyone thought I was an idiot, which a lot of people did, and just if it got trashed, put it out, and it sucked, it doesn't matter. I have you. That's all I need. So That's so sweet. Yeah, and... Um, I love when you say that, like, give me compliments. I mean, it's so true. Cause it, it, it we makes, can never fail. Yeah, because it makes me feel like just that... Anything that you do, I'll always back you up because I know how much I mean to you and how much you mean to me. And your dream really, I mean, people are going to be like, oh, this dude, some people out there, oh, this dude just talking about his dreams. Your, my, dream, what, what, your dream is what you just said. You know what right? my dream was. Stay is, at home mom, be yeah, a great mom. Yeah, to be able to be the best mom ever and to just have travel the world with you like does that not sound like the best dream ever it does being able to share the gospel and like it's not about and something else i could get into which we don't have to but a lot of people 
say that you need this in order to survive this and this. When you have kids, you have to have a burp towel. You have to have a swallow nest. Like, I'm like, we can survive off of the most simple things, and that is what will make us the happiest people ever. Exactly. Like, we don't need all of these things, all these materialistic things. As long as we have us and God and purity and his vision, we're going to succeed. This is why I love you. These conversations. I can't much. believe we're doing it on a podcast, though. This is the stuff we talk about privately. I know. We do. Our, our confidence. We're getting a lot more comfortable. For sure. Our confidence. Here's one thing I'll notice, and this is one thing I'm going to talk about t- on tomorrow's episode I'm recording. Y'all will see it on Thursday, probably. I don't know. With JT Noah. We're oh. going to talk about the... I've, I've recently been inspired by the Colorado Buffalo. Mm-hmm. The way Deion Sanders talks. Deion yeah. Sanders is their coach. He talks so confidently. And that's why he's so hated. If you follow them at all, Deion Sanders came in to a program that averaged, their average game was a 28-point loss. Their (laughs) average game was a 28-point loss. Deion Sanders came in so confidently speaking, saying, he's he's saying, I'm coming. I'm coming. And I'm bringing my people with me. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm bringing my people with me. Ten of y'all's spots are already covered. They're like, what, what? Ten of y'all are already gone, and y'all better go hop in the portal because I'm coming. And they're like, whoa, whoa, what? The, the, how confidently he talked. And you know where he was coming from? Mm-hmm. He was coming from HBCU, Jackson State, little tiny college mm-hmm. that nobody ever would have looked at to be anything relevant. He was bringing players from there to Colorado. Dude, that's insane. Speaking confidently at these Division One players' face, I'm coming, I'm bringing my guys. They're like, well, screw you, bro. I'm hopping the portal. I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. You can bring your guys. You're going to be trash talking like this. Mm-hmm. Everyone's hating on him saying, Colorado's going to suck, dude. They're, they're, Deion Sanders talking crazy. His confidence, here it was, Deion Sanders' <laughs> confidence offended people. I know that our confidence right here, speaking of this, there will be people out, people out there that get offended mm-hmm. by us doing this. Speaking confidently in general offends people that are not confident within themselves because it triggers them. It makes them look at you. They'll look at you. They'll look at me for speaking confidently about our dreams. And they'll be like, deep down, they may not even realize it, but they're like, man, I wish I could be that confident about my dreams. And it triggers them and it causes them to hate on us, doubt on us. That's why I pray for my haters Mm -hmm. because they don't even know, most of the time, they don't even know what they're going through. They're hating on us because they lack confidence within themselves. Yeah. These people that were hating on Deion Sanders lacked confidence within themselves. So they hate on him. He's going to be trash. He's going to suck. Comes out, beats the national champion runner-up in the first game of the year. And their home field went into TCU. Isn't that insane? Beats them. Goes home to play Nebraska. Three-point favorite. Beats them by 20-something. Like, just because of the confidence. Yeah. His confidence triggered so many people. And that's why I love him because I relate with him. I'm like, dude... That's exactly how I felt going into becoming president of SIG UP. Mm-hmm. Another pe- reason people judge Deion Sanders is because he comes in with his chain. He comes in with his swag. He's being himself authentically. Being yourself authentically, again, triggers people that are not authentically themselves. Yeah. They don't even realize it, but they're hating on him because they're triggered that they can't express who they are. And again, that's why I say pray for your haters. They don't even know what they're going through. Mm-hmm. They're hating on him because he comes in wearing his chain, doing his thing. That's how I felt going into being coming president of SIG UP. Everyone's like, man, this dude's coming in here with dreads. I had dreads at the time. Coming in with dreads. Coming into meetings with cut-off sweatpants shorts. Yeah. This dude coming in talking boldly, speaking his mind. I was going into meetings being myself. I wasn't trying to act all professional. I was just acting like myself. We had a guy in my fraternity call the cops on another fraternity's party. Just some you know ignorant stuff went to that dude's room, kicked him out of the fraternity, went into their next chapter meeting two days later, went in there, stood right there with my dreads and said, I'm sorry for what we did. Here's what we did. We called the, we called the cops on your party. We didn't do it. One of our guys did it. That dude's kicked out on the spot. I kicked him out. They're like, oh, he kicked him out. I kicked him out on the spot. I'm sorry. It'll never happen again. I love you guys. Everyone. It was our rival. Mm -hmm. I said, I love every single one of you in here. I don't even know most of y'all, but I love you. And because I love you, I kicked him out and I'm here to apologize. They were blown away. I was coming in authentically and I relate with Deion Sanders in so many ways. I hope I'm not sounding cocky. No, you gave me chills. Well, like I I just relate with Deion Sanders so much Mm -hmm. because he's coming in confidently doing his thing. And now he's winning. I won 
fraternity president of the year <laughs> over all the professionalism, all the people walking in trying to act the part. I went in being myself and it played out perfectly. Mm -hmm. So I hope that's motivation. I hope it's not coming off as cocky or full of myself or anything like that. I hope you all understand that like you can do that too. You can be yourself. You can be confident. You can make an impact by being you. You don't have to act a part. You just have to be yourself. Um, Preach. But be the version of you that God calls you to be. Don't be the, oh, I'm going to be myself. I'm going to be proud of who I am. God doesn't call you to be proud. Calls you to, to God That's, calls you to die to yourself, yeah. deny oh, yourself, true. and follow mm -hmm. him. Yeah. You're speaking fast right now. I'm just so, I've, You're it's been up. 10 days, and I have not had been on a mic in 10 days, <laughs> and it, oh, it's coming out. And tomorrow it's coming out again because I'm talking about all this again tomorrow. I can't wait. Wait, with who? JT. You, I thought you said Thursday. Oh, is it coming out Drop, Thursday? No, Thursday? Okay. This is dropping on Tuesday. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, that's exciting. What do you guys say? Well, let's wrap this thing up. I gotta go. We got. We, we got to go to bed. Yeah, we we have school tomorrow. I want to wrap this up by saying that every time I leave, every time we finish like a podcast, I leave just so motivated and i just leave feeling so reassured that god has such great plans for us in the future and i we can't even think of them right now because i feel like they're so big that god doesn't want us to see right now how big they are and yeah. i just know that something's gonna happen one day i agree my hands are i was like what I, was are you my fingers I thought that was a little code for me i was like what no i agree too i agree with everything you just said yeah and i just am so proud of you and i love you because you're the reason that this is all doing good you know and that you really put in a lot of work no i'm not you're the reason god's the reason god but is. you're the reason this is even here yeah but you're so. the reason that this is even working <laughs> but you're the reason i even started this <laughs> well yeah i guess and yeah we both like bought that together but you i'm telling this. you i love you Maisie. love you buddy buddy boy last thing i want to say before i end this this might not hit with a lot of people but it's one last thing that's been on my mind mm -hmm. oh no how do i say it i'm scared no it's nothing bad oh i just want to say it right it's kind of hard to explain when you're in a routine, days turn into seconds. Weeks turn into days. Months turn into weeks. Years turn into months. What I'm trying to say is when you get in a routine, time starts flying. Bam, bam, bam. You look back and you're like, dude, it's been a month? Mm -hmm. Feels like a day. <laughs> dude, it's been a year? College went so fast. We were in such a routine. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah. When you get in a routine, you truck along. I challenge y'all to take some time to rest. It's crazy I'm saying that, right? I know. You don't ever It's something rest. I've really been thinking about lately. Shout out um, Pastor Tim Ross. <laughs> um, so what I'm trying to say is when you get in a routine, you start chugging along. Bam, bam, bam. Like I said, months feel like days. Years feel like months. You're going so fast. You look back, so much time has passed. And then you get to be like 75 years old and you're like, I just lived my whole life in a blink of an eye and it wasn't even the life I wanted to live. I challenge everybody to take some time to rest, sit back and evaluate the way you're living your life. And remember, this is your only life. You don't get to redo this life. And have a tough conversation with yourself. Am I okay with the way I'm living? Am I in love with the way I'm living? Or do I hate the way I'm living? And if you are okay with it, I would challenge you to maybe make a change because I'm okay with the way I'm living right now, but I'm very much wanting to make a change. Mm -hmm. If you're hating the way you're living, mm -hmm. it's never too late to change. Sometimes you have to just take a leap of faith and trust that God's got you. Pray about it. But I want you all to take some time to rest and evaluate the routine that you're in and ask yourself, is this even what I'm supposed to be doing? And what am I doing this for? Am I doing this for money, for this nice house, for this nice car? What am I doing this for? Am I doing it for my family? If you're doing it for your family, you should probably keep doing it because that's, that's a good thing. You're doing it for, you're fulfilling your purpose that God has called you for? That's a good thing. Are you doing it for a car payment? Well, is that car payment worth anything? Maybe just sell the car and get a, mm -hmm. I, I, I saw a $500 car the other day. It had four wheels. It got you to point A to point B. Cop that. Get rid of your car payment. Switch your life up. This is your one life, dude. 
and this world forces us to play this game of monopoly. They just force us into it. You don't get the choice. They've created this game, this economy, this way of living, and you didn't get to choose to live it. They just said, here you go. This is how we run things in America. This is how we do it. You don't have to play by the rules. The rules, yeah, technically, like, you got to play by rules that will send you to jail, like pay your taxes, pay your car payment, do that stuff. But don't let it take away from your one life. Like, what I'm, my goal is not to have the nicest clothes, the nicest car, the nicest house. Mm -hmm. And people, you know, we were even talking with my family today about living in a certain area, lower income, let's just call it that. And they were like, oh, like, how could you, like, why would you want to live there? Like, you could live somewhere better. I'm like, my, my life is not based around where I live, what I drive, what I wear. My life is based around, am I fulfilled? Am I fulfilling God's purpose for my life? Are you happy? Or is our family happy? Am I stressed about money? Am I making sense right now? Yeah. I just think that I don't want anyone watching this to get caught in a routine blow through their life and look back and regret what they did. Your routine, like I said, causes months to turn into, months feel like days, years feel like months. Everything feels so quick. It goes by in a blink of an eye. I'm 23, I'm trying to catch that now. People are like, dude, you got your whole life to live. No, I'm trying to catch it right now. Because guess what? I got my whole life to live right now. A year from now, I'm gonna have less of a life to live. 10 years from now, I'm gonna have less of a life to live. If I just accept the, the, the easy way, if I just accept that I have so much ahead of me, time's going to pass and I'm not going to have so much ahead of me anymore. Mm -hmm. Catch it early, y'all. And it's never too late. If you're watching this and you're 65, it's never too late. You're still living. You're still breathing. It's never too late. That's awesome. That's a great way to end it. Yeah, I hope so. I hope this, that made sense. <laughs> this was more of like, this was more of not like about relationship advice. It's about more of like what we're going through right now. And I feel like yes. what we need to get out of, off of our chest. Oh, I need, and there's so much more I need to get off, dude. Talk about with JT tomorrow. Yeah. Oh. Do you want to keep going? Okay, I want to say one more thing. Okay. Sorry. Don't ever look at us and think that we have it all figured out. Just because we have microphones and a camera and I have some random wisdom <laughs> that y'all probably mm -hmm. have too. Maybe I'm just saying stuff that you already knew. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Don't look at us and think that because we do this that we have it all figured out. I've been going through it, dude. Macy knows. I talked about it earlier on this episode. I've been waking up not feeling that fire of like, yes, it's another day. I've been waking up being like, dang Just dragging it. your feet. Like, I'm, thank you, God, for letting me see another day, but oh, I don't want to go to work today. But, like, yeah, I feel like there's so much more potential and and what God has for you. Yeah, but the point of that is don't look at us and think we have all figured out. Just because we're up here talking on a podcast doesn't mean we know everything or anything. We know a little bit, I hope. hope but there's always more hit. we can learn. Would you agree? Would you? How do you feel right now in your life? I feel like you're pretty happy. You've just been overthinking a little bit. Yeah, I, I sometimes tend to um, put a lot of control and think about the future because I'm – I just am a planner. Like a lot of times I like to plan out when Foster talks about his dreams and stuff. Okay, I'm like, okay, we got to line it to this. Now I'm thinking about this plan. And then Foster's like, actually, no, I want this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, now I got to think about life this way. And it's like, I pray that God just let, I just pray that I surrender it to God. And I'm at a great stage in life right now because I'm excited to do whatever you want to do. You know? Well, and what you want to do. Well, what I want to do is, simple you yeah. know I'm not here I've never been one to want the most th stuff or want this crazy life like I just am more of a simple I'm an old soul so I'll yeah. be happy wherever for sure yeah anyways I'm not hard to please but yeah yeah but hopefully <laughs> I can please you you know what I'm saying you always do for more than 15 seconds anyways <gasps> oh so I um, <laughs> Okay, we need to end this. We're Love going you to guys bed. so much. Thank you for watching. It's time for bed. It's time for Rob to come take a, a thumbnail peak. pic. Did he say anything? I don't know. Shout out Robert the Creator. Shout out Underwater Fly Zone. Yeah, shout him shout out. out Macy. Woo woo. Um, we'll run we'll run an episode back with Macy soon, but like I said, we're gonna get into some other stuff here for a little bit. Um, but yeah.
thank you guys for watching. Comment, thank you for listening. Yeah, like, comment, subscribe. Comment down below anything you wanted to just chat about, ask us, or just give us, even us, some advice. Exactly. Please. Yeah. Please comment anything. Um, dude, if people listen to the last 40 minutes of that, <laughs> was I was it? in my bag a little bit, I felt yeah. like. You really were. You I was just half. speaking what I needed to speak, Ooh. dude. Again, you got to feel all emotions. You got to let it out. I feel yeah. like I just let some stuff I'm out. I'm proud of you. Yeah. Happy for you. I'm going to start doing solo episodes and just rant. You should. <laughs> or just episodes with you, but. That'd be fun. I don't care. Yeah, we don't even have to do dating advice all the time. No. All right. Love you guys. Peace out.